News at sunrise. It's 4.59. Here are your morning headlines. A scare in downtown Portland at a parking garage. Police arrested a woman with a realistic replica gun. Streets near First and Morrison shut down yesterday afternoon as police took that woman into custody. Officers say they know of at least two other incidents where this same woman had a realistic replica gun. Take a look at this photo. Vancouver police need your help finding this woman. They say Jessica Santiago is considered endangered. She was last seen near East Mill Plain and Grand Boulevard in Vancouver on Tuesday. Santiago uses a wheelchair and she needs medication every day. If you know where she is, call 911. And local businesses know downtown isn't everyone's first choice for shopping. Between traffic and the allure of online shopping, they realize many would prefer to stay home. So as an extra incentive to get people shopping downtown, Portland is offering free Smart Park garage parking all day on Sunday, December 8th, the 15th and the 22nd. How about that? Those are your Wednesday headlines now. Here's what's coming up on Sunrise. How about this, Brenda Braxton? Reunited and it felines so good. <laughs> Nicely done. Felines so good, yes. We told you all about Sasha the cat and his owner yesterday. After he went missing five years ago, Sasha was found more than a thousand miles away from here in New Mexico. We have the moment when cat and cat owner came back together. We'll share it with you in 15 minutes. And then a little later this hour. I kind of want, don't want to stop the uh, playing there. I don't want to <laughs> interrupt, but I'm going to tell you about a story. It's a local nonprofit that's giving kids two things that are absolutely essential for them to pursue their musical passion, instruments and instruction. And those kids are getting those two things for free. I know you did this story and I got to tell all our viewers it is worth sticking around Thank for. You. Brilliantly done. Play it forward is what it's called. Oh, I love it. Love it. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. It's midweek. Let's check in with Rod, see what the forecast holds for us. How you doing? Hey, doing well. Good morning. Remember yesterday, this time it was raining. The rain was really coming down. Totally opposite situation this morning. We are dry. Skies cleared overnight in many areas, and because of that, it is chilly out this morning. Battleground just above freezing. Hillsboro mid-30s. Tiger is at 38. 41 and perhaps still falling in downtown Portland. 41, 42 in Salem and likely still falling as well. Now we are starting to get some fog pockets developing. If that happens and the fog becomes widespread, it could stick around much of the morning. Otherwise, we will expect enough sunshine to be 51 at noon at the bus stop after a chilly start out the door and beautifully mid 50s when the kids get out of school this afternoon. More on today's weather coming up shortly. Sounds good. Thank you, Rod. Well, this is a critical day in the impeachment inquiry. House investigators will question EU ambassador and Portland hotel executive Gordon Sondland. Sondland had direct conversations with President Trump about Ukraine, and today's hearings will zero in on what exactly was said during those conversations. NBC's Craig Broswell has more. Ultimately, you don't know, sir, what we... A day after four key foreign policy players testified for nearly 10 hours, it's the appearance of ambassador to the European Union Gordon Sondland that could be the most pivotal witness so far in the impeachment inquiry of President Trump. We know Ambassador Sondland delivered the, you know, unvarnished quid pro quo uh, to the Ukrainians in Warsaw on September 1st. Ambassador Sondland changed his closed-door testimony about a September conversation with a top Ukraine official saying he now recalls U.S. military aid to Ukraine was being held up in exchange for an investigation of President Trump's political rivals. Sondland will also face questions about a previously unknown cell phone call with the president while at a restaurant in Kiev. That was the day after the call between President Trump and Ukraine's president that led to these impeachment proceedings. It involved discussion of what appeared to be a domestic political matter. In Monday's afternoon session, Ambassador Kurt Volker changed his testimony, saying he didn't know it at the time, but now realizes the Trump administration sought investigations and military aid depended on it. In retrospect, I should have seen that connection differently, and had I done so, I would have raised my own objections. President Trump bashed the proceedings. It's a scam. It's a big scam. Today, it's the president's hand-picked ambassador to be questioned about direct conversations with the president. Sondland will also be asked about a July meeting with Ukrainian officials and former National Security Advisor John Bolton, a meeting that ended abruptly when Sondland brought up investigations. Craig Boswell, NBC News, Washington. Gordon Sondland, tell the truth! 
Dozens of protesters converged on several Portland hotels owned by the company Gordon Sondland co-founded. He is first up in today's impeachment hearings. Last night, the protesters stood in front of the Sentinel Hotel and then marched to the Woodlark and Dossier Hotels. They are three of six hotels owned by Provenance. The protesters want to make sure Portlanders are watching the hearings, and they're hoping to send a message to Sondland. People need to stay informed, they need to wake up out of their coma, and they need to pay attention. Portlanders really care about this, and they want him to get the message that he needs to come clean and do what's right for our country and tell the truth. We're airing Sondland's testimony live on KGW starting at 6 a.m., but our local coverage won't stop and it'll be commercial free. There are tons of ways to watch. You can switch over to channel 8.2 or if you're watching on Comcast, it's channel 308. If you have charter cable, watch channel 183 and on Frontier, it's channel 461. You can also just hop onto our social media pages or the KGW app. That's where you'll find us streaming our six o'clock show. Now to two agencies going back and forth over an undocumented immigrant's arrest and release. The Washington County Sheriff's Office and ICE disagree with how the other handled the situation. Right, so ICE is blaming the Sheriff's Office for letting the man get away and right now they believe that he's in Mexico. The Sheriff's Office on the other hand says ICE didn't play by the rules. There's obviously a lot to this, so let's start with Alejandro Maldonado Hernandez. He's accused of causing a deadly crash while racing in Aloha over the summer. Washington County deputies booked him in the jail. ICE then placed what's called an immigration detainer on Maldonado Hernandez and asked the sheriff's office to let ICE agents know when deputies would release him. But the county didn't let them know. He posted bail and right now the thought is that he fled the country to avoid prosecution. So that immigration detainer we mentioned is what's really at the center of this issue. Five years ago, an Oregon court ruled ICE detainers aren't enforceable here in Oregon. The sheriff's office also says ICE didn't provide a federal warrant, otherwise they would have kept Maldonado Hernandez in custody. Washington is expanding its vaping ban to include all products containing vitamin E acetate. The CDC recently linked that substance to vaping-related lung injuries, but health officials still don't know exactly what's causing the problem. Washington's temporary ban is set to expire on February 7th of next year, but it could be extended. Oregon also banned flavored nicotine and marijuana vaping products, but last month the Oregon Court of Appeals put that ban on hold. This next story is about a dirty job that somebody's got to do, but right now a local company that does this job can't. Thousands of dirty cloth diapers are piling up at a diaper service in southeast Portland called Tidy Dighty. Tidy Dighty delivers clean cloth diapers to its customers. They also pick up the dirty ones and sanitize them. That second part of the job is what's going wrong right now. The company says last week their boiler caught fire and that boiler is needed to heat the water that's used to sanitize the diapers. Thousands of dirty diapers are coming in. They're not getting washed right now. And the fear is that these cloth diapers will have to be thrown out. At some point, once it gets soiled and stays for so long, it just has to be thrown away. So we're looking at almost an entirety of our cloth diapering just being tossed in the garbage since we have no way to wash them. It's really, really affecting us in several different ways. We're losing a lot of product. They're also losing some employees, at least for the time being, because Tidy Dighty says it's had to lay off 10 of its workers until that boiler gets fixed. The company plans to refund any customers who paid for that service in advance. Well, some scientists at Oregon State are spending their time collecting whale waste. It's not a pretty job, but it can actually tell researchers a lot about the health of our oceans. The team of marine ecologists follows gray whales off the coast of Oregon, waiting for them to do their business. Drones fly above, alerting scientists when the time is right, and then they spring into action. They only have about 30 seconds before all that valuable information sinks to the bottom of the ocean. We're typically there on the boat uh, watching the whale, uh, monitoring its behavior. We have cameras in our hands. And then all of a sudden we'll just see the poop coming out of the whale and somebody yells at usually multiple people, poop! And then, yeah, we're sort of, you know, for like 20, 30 frantic seconds whipping our nets through the fecal plume in the water trying to collect as much as we can. 
I thought it was so much more sciencey. <laughs> nope. It's just a poop. <laughs> nope. It's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> the scientists analyze the ways for all kinds of things, including checking hormone levels to see if those whales are stressed. And they say that stress could be the result of more no noise in the ocean. In addition, the scientists analyze how warmer ocean water is impacting the whales. Right now, they're applying for a grant to continue their work for another three years. How do we go from that story to this one? Well, we'll try this. Did Carmelo Anthony have a whale of a debut last night for the Blazers, or did he have a poopy one? <laughs> <laughs> Carmelo Anthony, will you be the judge? He had 10 points in 24 minutes during a 115 to 104 loss to the Pelicans. Anthony actually was in the starting lineup last night in New Orleans, and he got the first bucket of the night for the Blazers. But he only hit three more shots the rest of the night. He also had five fouls and five turnovers. After the game, he talked about his highly anticipated return to the NBA. Just being out there with the guys again, I think more so of the routine, you know, team buzz, team lunch, being around the guys, locker room, you know, just the, the routine that I've been used to for, you know, 17 years now. So getting back into that. But as far as the game goes, it felt good to be back out there. Anthony playing was the headline, but this was a pretty close second. Damian Lillard did not play last night. He was out with back spasms. Rookie Nasir Little was a bright spot in this one. He had 12 points and 11 rebounds. The double-double, as they say. <laughs> Blazers are now 5-10. and 10. Up next, Milwaukee. Tomorrow night where they face the Bucks. I looked at the standings this morning mm -hmm. just for fun. Why'd you do that? That's because I wanted to know this. <laughs> there is only one team in the NBA now with more losses than the Blazers. And we hang our head. And that team is the Golden State Warriors of all teams. Isn't I know. That surprising? Isn't that ironic? Right. Did you watch last night? Uh, I d here's the problem. I have direct TV, which does not allow me to see uh, oh, Comcast okay. sports. You couldn't watch it on Comcast last night either. It was blocked out. On I do have NBA blacked TV, out. but they don't show the games when the games yeah. are in Portland. Or well, when we were Bob's front and center yeah. when tip-off happened. And, I mean, I'm no expert, but uh, he uh, looked as good as anybody else yeah. out there. Okay. And these days, not saying that much. I was, were you surprised that he was in the starting lineup? I didn't know that was going to happen right out of the shoot. Yeah, but who else would be Dame's out? Right. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like that yeah. he could pop in there. Well, I mean, honestly, one of the reasons we got him is because we simply need warm bodies at this right. point. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Well, I figured he'd be in the starting lineup eventually. I just didn't think it was last mm -hmm. night. Anyways, that's yeah. a lot of Carmelo talk. Here we go.